He was nominated for an Academy Award, a BAFTA, and a Golden Globe at just 16. Jack Wilde for Oliver. He took us on trips with HR Puffin Stuff and won over our hearts as a teen heartthrob. But Jack Wilde's life was never supposed to involve stardom. So was his life an unexpected fairy tale with a happily ever after? Well, I'm sad to say the truth is far more tragic. I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick, with all these unexpected triumphs and heartbreaking downfalls of the beloved Jack Wilde including why we owe a thank you to Phil Collins. You don't owe us anything, but if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I'll do anything for you to subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video. Now, without further ado, let's revisit the sweet and sad life of Jack Wilde. How old was Jack Wilde in Oliver? You couldn't have picked a better kid whose life paralleled his breakthrough film. Jack Wilde had a very humble upbringing his parents had very meager incomes, and when Jack was just eight, he took up a job helping the milkman, even if it only brought him in a whopping five shillings, which in those days was the equivalent of around a dozen or so pennies. Life as a star wasn't remotely on Jack's radar, even when that's exactly the kind of rags to riches track that would turn his life around. In fact, Jack outright admitted, quote, I never wanted to be an actor. I saw myself as either a footballer or a doctor. I don't care what you see. So he focused on sports and played football, or soccer for us Americans. He played with his brother and another kid who wasn't at all good at sports. That other kid was Phil Collins, and his mom worked as a theater agent. One day, she came to the park to pick Phil up, and she spotted the Wild Boys and talked to them, asked if they ever thought about acting. Well, she enrolled them in drama school, and that was that. And by 1964, Jack was cast in Oliver, first the West End version as Charlie. His brother got the lead role, but jump ahead just four years later. Jack was 16, and he was singing his way into our hearts as the Artful Dodger. Did Jack Wilde sing in Oliver? 1968's Oliver won the Academy Award for Best Score of a Musical Picture and Best Sound, and it was nominated several times over by other film boards, mostly highlighting the music and Jack Wilde as a promising newcomer. A huge part of the movie's success was Jack's undeniable and versatile talent. It just so happens music was a familiar companion for Jack. For one thing, Jack did all of his own singing, and another surprise connection to music. While Jack did not play Artful Dodger in the West End production, that role went to David Jones, who would later be part of The Monkees. Rivaling Wilde's beloved film and TV career is his musical work. By 1970, this new coming rising star had his own album, fittingly called the Jack Wilde Album, mostly made up of Jack's covers of popular British tracks. We got to hear some original stuff the following year with Everybody's Coming Up Roses. My personal favorite is Bring Yourself Back to Me. Bring yourself back to me. Then in 72 came the last big album, A Beautiful World and the great single Some Beautiful stands out for charting in both the US and the UK. Were Mark Lester and Jack Wilde friends? Of course, one of the driving forces for Oliver is the friendship between our titular character and the most artful Dodger. Jack still became the apple of everyone's eyes, even when not playing the title role, as bringing Oliver to life was Mark Lester. We've seen enough drama to know full-grown adults can get pretty petty when they don't get the screen time they want. So what about these teens? Or, you know, being fortunate enough to be able to play the part of the artful dog. Well, actually, life ended up imitating art here, and both Jack and Mark were fast friends, just like their on-screen counterparts. And not long after Oliver, the two reunited for 1971's Melody. Though they each did their own things, their brotherhood was so strong and left such an impression that Mark would say decades later, quote, Jack was like a brother to me during the making of the film and was always very protective. He added, quote, the chemistry between us was just something very, very special and lasted throughout our lives. How did Oliver Reed get the scars on his face? 
Not everything was smooth sailing, even working on the film that made Jack a household name. In fact, working on Oliver, all the child actors were scared of their adult colleague, Oliver Reed. A lot of repeating names here, I'm sorry. But in the film, Reed played the big bad Bill Sykes. Well, that makes sense because they're all scared of him. But it was more about Reed's sheer giant presence than his character's actions. I want some more. What? Jack remembered, quote, As kids, we were all terrified of him because he was this giant of a man. And the only time we ever saw him was when he was in costume and made up for the part. As a talented and dedicated character actor, Reed kept his distance from the younger cast, hoping to maximize his imposing effects. The kids never got to know him as anything but a looming, imposing figure. Tragically, there was another issue weighing heavy on Reed's mind. Just a few years ago, he'd been hit at a bar when he got into an argument with some other patrons. He left with a dismissive comment, but when he went to the bathroom, the guys ambushed him, smacking him with broken bottles, and the result was three dozen stitches. Reed was left with scars across his face that he thought surely meant the end of his acting career. Who did Jack Wilde marry? So Jack never intended on being an actor, but that life path brought him some pretty big milestones. For one thing, he was just 12 when he met a Welsh actress named Gaynor Jones in drama school. The two did not cross paths again until 1970, and six years later, they were married. Sadly, however, they did split up in 1985 because of Jack's personal demons. But Jack found lifelong love with another woman named Claire Harding who he met while they worked together in Jack and the Beanstalk. The two were married in 2005, but the fairy tale was always in danger of drawing to a very dramatic and tragic close. What happened to Jack Wilde after Oliver? After rocketing to fame with Oliver, Jack further cemented his celebrity status by landing the role of Jimmy in H.R. Puffinstuff, a role he reprised in the 1970 movie. And Puffin Stuff is legendary. But that same decade, he was classified a teen heartthrob among the ranks of Barry Williams and David Cassidy. Of course, he was featured in Tiger Beat. Actually, former Tiger Beat editor Anne Moses says Jack was one of the first of the magazine stars she approached. She just couldn't help but see him as a child at 17, chaperoned by his big bro. And as she tells it, his time in the industry was like a shooting star, magnificent, but very brief, before flickering out and leaving us all sadder for it. Jack did have one ongoing grievance. Even in his 20s, he was landing gigs playing young teens. He said, quote, when I first entered in the show business, of course, I didn't mind playing younger roles. However, it did bug me when I would be 21 being offered the role of a 13 year old. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy playing these roles. I had barrels of fun. I just wanted more serious and dramatic roles. It's that simple. He might have gotten the chance, since there were plans for him to star opposite Susie Quattro from Happy Days in a British rendition of Bonnie and Clyde. But this very promising project never saw the light of day. And I'm sure that had to be a very painful blow. Jack took a break from acting and focused on music. But when he returned to the industry, most of his roles were much smaller. And in this time, in his early 20s, Jack became an alcoholic. He drained his funds to fuel his addictions, and it got to the point he had to move in with his dad. He couldn't afford housing. Jack's alcoholism seeped into every aspect of his life. It ruined his marriage with his first wife. And it got so bad, he had three cardiac arrests and had to be hospitalized multiple times. By the mid 80s, Jack downed three to four bottles of vodka a week. Every single day, he would go through half a bottle of vodka plus two bottles of wine. And my head's even spinning thinking about that. Chronic alcoholism can lead to diabetes and that's just what happened to Jack. For a blip of time, he was sober thanks to a drying out clinic run by musician Pete Townshend. But he drank a bottle of champagne in celebration and ended up at square one. It was only with the support from Alcoholics Victorious that Jack got permanently sober in 1989. For years, Jack and his second wife, Claire, worked tirelessly on his autobiography to tell the full scope of his very unique tale. But tragically, this would be a task Claire would have to finish alone. 
Although Jack accomplished his admirable task of getting sober, the damage to his health had already been done, and in 2000, Jack was diagnosed with oral cancer. Jack blames this on his drinking, but he doesn't want to blame his drinking on his child star history. The way he saw it, quote, I believed I'd have been a heavy drinker in any case. And this may be true, his brother was also hospitalized for drinking too much. So Jack and Claire moved to a quiet village in Britain, and Jack underwent a bunch of procedures to battle his cancer, including chemotherapy and radiotherapy. For a brief time, the cancer went into remission, and it looked like Jack was in the clear. But then it came back in full force. To try to save Jack's life, he had his voice box and tongue surgically removed. Jack Wilde, who charmed nations with his voice, was now left unable to speak, eat, or drink, and had to be fed through a tube in his stomach. That was how Jack spent his final days before passing away on March 1st, 2006 at the age of 53. His wife, Claire, survives him and was left with the imposing task of finishing his biography, combing through his personal archives, audio interviews, and written recollections. But she did finish the task, and his autobiography was released in 2016. The title is It's a Dodger's Life. Jack Wilde really was exceptional. He never accounted for the legendary status he ended up earning, crossing paths with other triumphant and troubled souls, figuring out their place while he figured out his. It was almost the perfect rags to riches story, but it turned tragic at the end. So tell us, do you remember Jack Wilde from Oliver? Who was your favorite character from Oliver? Did you ever listen to any of Jack's music? And who grew up watching HR Puffin Stuff? Get in the comments and tell me all things Jack Wilde. Did I forget to mention a role? If you enjoyed our deep dive, please give this video a thumbs up to show support. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this and tell us who we should cover next. Now from all of us here at Do You Remember, I want to thank you for watching.